What's up folks, Mike here at Well In Watches and welcome to the video. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at another watch for review and this is the Aquinas Hydraulica. Uh, I'm just going to call it the Diver because Hydraulica sounds like a very strange kind of name and it is a diver's watch so that's what I'm going to call it. So this is the Aquinas Diver's Watch which is a stainless steel Swiss, uh, stainless steel Swiss, stainless steel quartz uh, wrist watch from an American brand uh, called Aquinas or Aquinas, it depends on how you want to pronounce it. I could be saying it entirely wrong, but I'm going to call it Aquinas because it's a diver's watch, aqua, and the two go together. So that kind of makes sense to me. So it's an Aquinas stainless steel uh, quartz diver's watch. But before we take a look at the watch itself and go over some of the, uh, the points about the watch, I am going to go into the packaging that the watch comes in. And there'll be a reason for this slightly later on in the, uh, the video. And some people actually like to see the packaging uh, that these watches come in. So obviously the watch came in this larger box, which is a cardboard box with the, uh, the brand and logo on the front. And inside that box was this tubular box. Again, cardboard. Nothing spectacular to see in here, but you can see that it's sat on this cushion. There's a protective film and the, uh, the tag there. And this box was actually stored inside this, uh, what I can only assume is a a diver's bag. Aquinas, professional diver watches, diving watches. The instructions there on the back on how to roll up the bag. So I assume this is some sort of diving style bag, diving style theme to go with uh, the watch. Obviously you roll it up and you can clip this and you can clip this to your belt or whatever it is that you're trying to protect. But anyway, this is what the watch uh, came in. It came inside uh, the box, in the bag, in the box. If that makes sense. So this is the uh, the international warranty, fairly standard uh, stuff. And of course, here are the links uh, that I removed from the bracelet to, uh, to fit my wrist. Standard three link bracelet with um, split pins. Really super easy to adjust the bracelet on this watch, like quite a lot of watches these days. Uh, the bracelet can be adjusted either using uh, one of these tools or um, more commonly found one of these kind of tools a flat pin style tool you can pick these up off uh, Amazon eBay anywhere like that fairly simple straightforward easy job to do so let's pop the uh, packaging back away for now so that's all the packaging that the, uh, the watch comes with so this is a watch uh, this is the black and red themed version. They do do other colorways and uh, they do it with uh, rubber straps instead of bracelets. Uh, so there are other choices that you could pick from the Aquinas range. Uh, this is the choice uh, that I went with because it seems the most popular kind of style. And there we go, it's very nice. So we're gonna go over the specs of this watch. It's 42 and a half millimeters wide, not including the crown, but if we include the crown, obviously it's gonna be a bit wider. So we're gonna measure it live here. See what we get up with. So about 45 and a half millimeters in total width if you include the uh, the crown as well. It's uh, 12 millimeters thick, so it's not skinny by any stretch of the imagination. It is reasonably chunky. To give that perspective, I'm wearing a G-Shock today. And G-Shocks are well known for being quite chunky. And this is the, uh, the metal square. So we compare them side by side. We see uh, they're about the same thickness. What thickness is this G-Shock? I cannot remember. So this is 12.93. So yeah, the G-Shock is about the same thickness as this Diver Watch. So if you like G-Shocks, then um, you'll probably like this Diver Watch. It's about the same thickness. It's about the same weight as well by the feel of it. Anyway, moving on. So the, uh, the bracelet or the lug width is 20 millimeters and the bracelet is 20 millimeters from the lug all the way to the clasp. There's no tapering on this bracelet at all. There we go. So it has a Ronda 763 Swiss quartz movement. That is a Swiss quartz movement, not a Japanese movement, uh, which I found quite unusual, but it is a Swiss quartz movement rather than Japanese. Nothing wrong with a Swiss or a Japanese, but normally you find on these watches they use a, a Seiko Epson kind of movement. Uh, this one's a Ronda movement. And the 763 is a well-proven uh, Swiss quartz movement that you'll find in this watch and a lot of others and if you don't believe that a Ronda is a good movement just because it's cheaper if you buy any new Tag Heuer watches uh, you'll find that most of those actually have Ronda movements inside them as well 
So uh, as fancy as their watches are, uh, they also use Ronda Quartz movements in quite a lot of their watches as well. So not to be knocked, try trusted and proven reliability with uh, Ronda Swiss Quartz movements. There we go. Almost sounds like I'm pr promoting Ronda for a moment there, but I'm not. Anyway, we'll move on. So the glass, the glass is a bit of a strange one on this watch, and it's not the first watch that, uh, that I've come across this with. So some of the Selhor watches, which you can see the videos on uh, my channel about the Selhor uh, chronograph and diver watch uh, reviews on there. I think these watches, those watches use the same type of glass, and this is a mineral glass with a sapphire coating. So rather than going all the way mineral or all the way sapphire, uh, they've chosen to go with a sapphire coated mineral glass, which is... Uh, a bit unusual, but I have been wearing this watch for well over two months now, and I do go out cycling. I've been doing gardening, shifting tons and tons of gravel and sand and hardcore around wearing this watch. It has taken an actual beating, as you'll see from the bracelet and casing shortly. Uh, but the glass, as you may see from the reflection, is almost entirely scratch free. So, although I don't fully understand the choice of glass, it seems to do the uh, the trick. And it's not caused me any issues. There's no massive gouges or scratches from all the hardcore that I was shifting. So it's a big thumbs up. That actually seems uh, to work well. So it's a diver's watch and it is resistant waterproof up to 200 meters or 20 atmospheres, depending on which way you want to call it. Uh, I haven't actually tested it in the wet tester maybe i should do that for another video It'd be interesting to see if it is actually waterproof at all but if they say it is i'm going to take them at their word i'm only a desk diver so it doesn't really matter most of this is going to ever see is a shower so not a major problem so the watch overall is a great watch it's very comfortable to wear it's a classic design it's a clear design the bezel is really good 120 click really nice tight action on the bezel which is really good Obviously the dials have quite nice finish. They've got a nice black wavy pattern. Silver indices with white loom fill. And you've got the red dots for the chapter ring that match the bezel and the uh, the second arrow hand. So the kind of thing works through all the way throughout. The bezel insert is aluminum and not ceramic, which is unfortunate, but on the price point of this watch, uh, which is around about 200 pounds here in the UK or $295 US, I wouldn't really be expecting ceramic, although when you look on eBay, you find a lot of watches, cheap watches that use ceramic bezels. So I'm not entirely sure why uh, something that's around £200 can't use one as well. But I digress. So it's an aluminium insert. And it's got one of those pips that stick out. See if we can get a side view so you can see that pip really does stick out. But uh, as I said, I've batted this watch pretty hard and that pip is still there. So it must be doing something, something right. The bracelet is a typical uh, three-link style easily adjusted and as you can see from the condition of this bracelet it's taken a few knocks and scratches so this isn't a brand new pristine watch that's never been worn i'm not giving you a review on a watch that i've never actually used i've well used this watch so i can tell you for sure uh, what's good about it and what's not have a look at the case back as you can see that's been well machined so there's no lightweight laser etching onto the case back here this is actually a machined case back screw back very nice with the uh, Aquinas logo there in the middle and as you can also see the end links are also solid and not those flaccid little folded links that you find on quite a lot of watches so as I said this is a 200 pound uh, watch here in the UK $295 US uh, so it's not a, a cheap watch and it's certainly not the most expensive watch when compared to uh, something like a Seiko Turtle or um, <coughs> Well, any Seiko nowadays, all the Seiko seem to be going quite high up in price. Um, so £200 is a quite decent watch, and the quality is there. It does feel good quality. It's very comfortable. You've got the reliable uh, Swiss quartz movement, uh, screw-down crown, a nice tight bezel, no loose flaccid bezel. Can't stand a loose flaccid bezel. Um, so it has a lot of good quality redeeming features, but there are, of course, like with any watch, there are going to be some cons, there are going to be some bad points. So the bad points for me would be that, well, quite frankly, these kind of designs of watches are, there's plenty of them around. There's plenty to choose from. 
of this kind of diver style. You've got the Rolexes and you've got the Rolex copies. You've got the, the Seikos, of course, and you've got a couple of Citizen divers that you could choose from, especially within the £200 price bracket. Even on a used market, you can buy watches that are very similar to this. So picking this watch out of a lineup of so many other designs that look the same um, makes it a tough choice. What does this offer over those? But that's just my viewpoint some people might really like the styling of this particular model and that's fine that's great but i think it's an overly used design uh, it's not a bad design but i think it's a, a personally an overused um, design the uh, the pepsi style um, or maybe i've just been looking at too many pictures on instagram of pepsi style watches and i've gone grown sick of them uh, but there we go but overall the good points outweigh the bad we haven't done actually done a loom shot but i'll do that now just so you can see how good the loom is so we're going to do the loom this is just under a normal lamp so there's no uh, special filters here so we're going to turn that off and as you can see the loom is pretty good and there's no special camera tricks this is just the loom of the watch so i could charge the uh, the loom if i wanted to right now with this uv pen And you can see it's not that much different. So the loom is pretty good on this watch. Which is, again, is another good point. There we go. Blinding light it is back on. The other bad point I don't like is uh, the bezel insert being aluminium is slightly cheap feeling. It doesn't look terribly cheap. But when you can buy watches on eBay that are fairly cheap and they come with ceramic inserts, I'm surprised that ceramic inserts aren't kind of more a standard thing now. Even on watches at £200 price point. Uh, but there we go. And the last negative point I would say would be the packaging. Uh, I understand that uh, the watches have to come in some sort of packaging, some sort of box. Uh, but the inclusion of this bag and this box inside a box. So the watch is in a box, in a bag, in a box. Which also comes in another cardboard box when it's delivered. That's a lot of packaging. We've also got to think about the environment and try and reduce our waste. And I'm not going to wear this box, but I am going to wear the watch. So simpler packaging would have been nicer. So you could have saved some of that money to improve either the bezel insert, uh, perhaps even the clasp. Uh, simple metal folded clasp. Maybe you could save some money there and save the packaging money and use that to put on a, a better clasp, a much stronger clasp or a diver's extension. Something nice like that, which would have been good to see. So alas, those would be my bad points. But... However, having worn this watch for several months, I have grown to quite enjoy it and quite like it. It's been very comfortable to wear without even realizing that I'm wearing it. Some diving watches are super heavy and um, they can really make you aware of the fact that you're wearing them because they're digging into your, uh, to your wrist all the time, especially if you're doing hard work like moving hardcore or you know, you're doing something arduous all day long you can actually feel the weight and uh, the fatigue on your arm of, of some watches but this has been super comfortable it's not overly heavy it's not super light it's not like a titanium watch but it's been there it's been faithful it's been reliable uh, the glass has not taken any damage which amazingly if you saw half the things that i had done whilst wearing this watch you'd be thinking it would be smashed by now but it's not um, the bezel nobody really uses the bezel on their watch but the bezel does have a good feel to it. I sent back a watch a couple of months ago because the bezel wasn't absolutely dead on, uh, but this one is, and that's really good. The screw down crown uh, also gives you good reassurance if you're going anywhere near water. So, overall, the Aquinas Hydrautica, Hydro, Hydronautica, the Aquius Divers watch, it is a good watch, but yes, it is a tough choice amongst a sea. Of other watches that are like it but if you're in a market for a 200 pound divers watch with a quartz movement that is reliable and comfortable uh, then you could do far worse so it's a big thumbs up from me on the uh, the Aquinas it's definitely worth checking out this brand they've got some other watches on their website so give them a look over see what uh, see what you think of their watches but that's it for now I'll be back again with another watch that I've got in for review uh, something that's a bit more up my street and we'll have a look at that uh, just as soon as I can get around to it. But until then, as usual, take care and have fun.
leave your thoughts and comments in the uh, in the doodly squib down below and uh, if I ever get time away from the bench uh, I'll try and answer some of those comments but until then take care and have fun